Now this election comes down to how you want your hard-earned money spent. Do you want to keep it and invest it in your future or have it taken by the most liberal person to ever run for the presidency and the Democratic leaders, the most liberal, who have been running Congress for the past two years, Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid? You know, my friends, this is a dangerous threesome. <laughs> they believe they believe, they believe that one trillion dollars of rescue financing is not enough and have already proposed another $300 billion spending spree. They're calling a stimulus plan. I would rather give the great American middle class additional tax cuts and let you keep that money invested in your future. Liberal landslides have happened before. In 1932, in the shadow of the Depression, when FDR and New Deal Democrats swept to power and created government programs like Social Security, unemployment insurance, the FDIC, Fannie Mae. We don't think that you should be working for government. We think that government should work for you. So if you share that commitment, we need your vote on November 4th because if big government spenders... Government spenders control the House and the Senate, and heaven forbid the White House, then they will have a monopoly of power in Washington. And the Obama Pelosi Reid agenda, it would put America on a path that erodes the strong work ethic that made this country so great. So, Virginia, let us fight together for what is right and free and uniquely American. It happened again after Lyndon Johnson and congressional liberals won in 64. The Great Society poured federal dollars into new programs, Medicare, urban renewal, welfare, education. But experience suggests a liberal landslide is about more than numbers. Just ask Jimmy Carter. 1977, Democratic president comes in with overwhelming Democratic majorities, both houses, 61 Democratic senators, uh, 292 Democratic House members, and within one month, uh, they were shouting at each other. What about 2008? Certainly Democrats would return to legislation they've pushed and Republicans have stopped. Health care, more coverage for kids, leading to universal coverage. Taxes, increase them for the wealthy and big corporations. They could also face more regulation, especially oil and pharmaceuticals. Unions, the Employee Free Choice Act, is a liberal favorite. It would end secret ballots to unionize, business warns of strong-arm tactics that would all but impose unions. Embryonic stem cell research, more federal funding for that. The list goes on. But in a lot of districts where Republicans could lose, the impact of the newcomers isn't clear. Those new Democrats are not going to be bug-eyed Democrats, wild-eyed leftists. They're going to be Democrats who will have to will have to run again for a seat that, let's say, has been electing uh, historically a Republican. Uh, so that is a moderating force. He has, I think, according to the National Journal, the most liberal voting record in the United States Senate. I have one of the most conservative. It's clear that he knows who his opponent's going to be. In